These young voices are singing the national anthem of Bhutan, a tiny Buddhist kingdom in the Himalayas. The song tells of the glory of Rook, the dragon king. The Kingdom of Bhutan is a constitutional monarchy sandwiched between India, Nepal and Tibet. It defends its two and a half million inhabitants with an iron grip. World Refugee Day is a time to recall that in some regions of the world, which to outsiders seem like peaceful paradises, the people who live there are far from content. As we shall see, there can be trouble in paradise. Driven out of their homeland in the 1990s by a previous king of Bhutan, around 100,000 Bhutanese of Nepalese origin have been forced to live in refugee camps set up by the United Nations. Bhutan won't have them back and Nepal would like to close the camps. The refugees are caught in a dispute where no one really wants them. For years now, home has been a squalid camp from where only the lucky few escape. Chandra and her family are the human faces of this international problem. She's 35 now and arrived as a young woman aged 19 at Bildangi camp. Earlier, she'd been driven out of her home by the Bhutanese military. I thought I, I was lost. So scared. Sorry. Her parents also have similar memories. They had to flee Bhutan. They were driven out several months before their daughter. We had two weeks to get out. If we didn't obey, we'd be put in jail. A car would pull up. They'd shine torches in our houses. We were scared and my heart was racing. We were afraid we'd be beaten up. We had to leave. We were crying as we left. Since then, like tens of thousands of other Bhutanese refugees, they've been waiting for a solution to their plight, an end to their exile. What's made things worse, the Bhutanese government now claims the majority of exiles aren't actually Bhutanese citizens and have no right to return. Many of them left, as I said, because they were illegal immigrants. We detected them. They had no basis to be here. Secondly, some of the uh, ethnic Nepalese immigrated. They voluntarily. We are a peace-loving Buddhist country. We don't, you know, one of the major problems we have in our cities today is the stray dogs. We don't have the heart to get rid of them. You know, and how would we do this to fellow human beings, fellow citizens? Malini Mozzaria represents ECHO, the humanitarian aid office of the EU. The Bhutanese refugees tell her they have no hope of being able to return to Bhutan. Once they arrived, assistance was given, but as far as the international community was concerned, not a lot of attention was given to any sort of solutions. So, uh, and, and a lot of lost generations um, in that process. Um, and uh, very much in need because they're refugees. And refugees don't have the rights to work. They don't have any land rights. They're not able to legally do anything to help themselves. So uh, they are completely and utterly dependent on the international community for assistance, for everything, for food, for health, for education, for water, for everything. Chandra uses her nursing skills in the refugee camp in Nepal. She supervises a feeding program and counsels refugees. For us, the life is very limited. We are uh, very restricted. We are not allowed to go outside and work. It's like a life in the jail. We don't have any access to anything. The Nepalese government doesn't allow the Bhutanese refugees to leave the camps, nor are they allowed to work. They have no land rights, they have literally nothing. These people depend entirely on aid from the international community. You know, Nepal gave them this uh, uh, humanitarian assistance in the hope that they will be
going back to their country. Uh, we ourselves have a lot of problems here and it is not possible for us to, to accommodate them in this country. I think they should take them back, they are their people. Since 1992, at the request of the Nepalese government, the World Food Programme, supported by the Humanitarian Aid Office of the EU, has been feeding the refugees. Specific programmes are in place to help the undernourished and pregnant women. There are more than 2,500 children in the camps who are judged as malnourished. Thousands more children have no experience of life outside of the camps. This is the only world they've known. Children are being born here every day. These children have no other concept or no other experience of life except for being a refugee and living in a refugee camp. Um, they, even if they're educated to a certain level, they have no other opportunities. They can't go out and work. They can't choose to be a pilot. They can't choose to be something else because they don't have the options. And the youth especially can become very disenfranchised if this happens for a long time. Some refugees have been able to leave. Saying goodbye is painful. <laughs> They're some of the lucky ones accepted under resettlement programs. 90,000 Bhutanese refugees have been given new lives in the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Norway, Denmark and the Netherlands. We don't have future in the camp. We have to live here as a refugee. But if you go to uh, next country, like USA, then we get a citizenship of USA. There we'll have freedom to live. We will have freedom. I believe that. Only half of the refugees have opted for a new life in the West. They regard Bhutan as their home and want to go there. Right up to the last minute, I'll try to get back to Bhutan, whatever it takes. But if I can't return to Bhutan, I won't opt for third country resettlement, even if thousands of others do. Until a political solution is found, the refugee camps of Nepal will not close, and their dependence on international aid will not go away.